I want to bring in uh, Dr. David Winter from Baylor Scott and White Health. Good morning to you, Dr. Winter. Good morning, Sonia. Always good to be with you. Yeah, good to see you. All right, so I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this Johnson & Johnson vaccine and the likelihood that we may see this FDA panel say, all right, we're going to grant you emergency use authorization. Let's get this rolling. Yeah, this is very exciting. We need this. We've got two vaccines out there now. There's not enough of those, so this is a welcome addition. This vaccine, as was stated there, it only requires one shot. It can be maintained in a regular refrigerator, which makes it a whole lot easier with storage and distribution, and it's highly effective. Now, you look at all these three vaccines, and people ask me, well, which one is the best? They're all good. We can't really even say which one could be better because there's been no head-to-head -head matches of these things. They're all good. They're all highly effective. They prevent deaths. They prevent hospitalization. They prevent severe cases of COVID-19, Sonia. So, Dr. Winter, we heard Dr. Fauci talk about this earlier this week. Um, what should we be doing even after we get uh, vaccinated? I mean, do you just go back to normal life as it once was, or are we still going to be asked to wear masks and physically distance, etc.? Yeah, here's the big issue. We don't know if the vaccines prevent transmission, meaning if you've been vaccinated, you won't get sick again, you won't be hospitalized, you won't die, but could you still get the, the virus itself if you were exposed and then pass it to someone else? The answer could be yes, could be no. The studies have not been done, and until they're done, we need to be careful because the, the virus is still out there, and if you can still spread it, we're never going to get rid of this virus. Yeah, and I think the issue with that that a lot of people are, are forgetting about, and I talked to a cardiologist about this last week, is that we're starting to see other systems of the body, not just the respiratory system, but the cardiovascular system, the heart, the muscles, the, cell, uh, the cells in the heart uh, affected by this COVID disease long term. So that's the concern, right? Is, is that's why we don't want to be passing it um, to, to other people. Yeah, indeed, Sonia, there's still so much not known about this virus. There's been studies that show it can affect the heart. You may not even know it, but that may have long-term repercussions. It can affect the brain. Some folks get these long-term symptoms. We call them long haulers that last months and months and months. So this is a nasty virus. We don't want to spread it. We need to get rid of it as soon as we can. So we're going to have to continue to mask, distance, and disinfect our hands for some time. Dr. Winter, the CDC came out this week and said, hey, we have done some studies uh, with regard to gyms and trying to contain COVID-19 or you know, spreading the disease. So I'm wondering, uh, I, we've talked about this study. What should gyms, fitness studios be doing or concerned with when it comes to having people exercise? We know exercise is good. I want people to exercise. I want to encourage that. But what's the best way to do it right now? Yeah, it's a very interesting uh, study, and thanks for sending that report to me, Sonia. So 81 people up in a gym in Chicago were exercising six feet apart. Most of them weren't wearing a mask, and 68% of them got sick with COVID the next week. This reminds me of a study earlier in the summer where there was a choir practicing all six feet apart, and most of those folks got sick the next week. So when we say, when studies show that in normal conversation, the virus doesn't go beyond six feet, that doesn't hold up if you're breathing heavily, if you're singing, shouting, or for that matter, if you're coughing or sneezing. We've got to know you have to be farther apart. So if you're going to exercise in a gym, get as far away from other people as you can. I think it's very important that you wear a mask. Uh, and finally, Dr. Winter, I think uh, I'm going to ask you to get, get out your crystal ball here. People are saying, well, I mean, okay, so now we've got vaccines, but we've still got to operate in these ways. Is this ever going to go away, Sonia? Are we ever going to get back to normal? I'm sure you've been getting some of the same questions. And a lot of people have been talking about, a lot of scientists are having that debate right now. The answer is we don't know for sure, but it could well be this, vac this virus is going to be around for a long, long time. It maybe will have to be vaccinated more than once, maybe uh, every year, maybe every other year. The virus continues to mutate, continues to change. Most countries in Africa don't have the vaccine right now, so it's not going to go away from our planet. It's going to keep coming back around. But if we can handle this with vaccines, maybe with some new ways to keep it from being spread, there is hope we can tame it and live with it like we do with influenza. That's the best hope I can give you today. Dr. David Winter, thank you so much for your time today.